to build a command line application in Rust, we have a few different options. We'll start out with the default way, which would be to access standard and args, and that'll give us access to the program's arguments. Let's start by grabbing the number of arguments of the program, and assigning that to a variable called argCount. We'll make sure that we get exactly two arguments. And print out a message to say that's what happened. This project set up as a cargo project. So if we have a look, we've got our cargo toml, which configures the project. And then if we have a look inside the source directory, we can see the main file that we were just working on. If we run this project with two arguments, we don't get a message. But if we run it with just one, we get the message we're expecting. So what's going on there? Let's modify the code slightly to print out the first argument. So we'll add a print line and a format. And we'll add standard and args. And we'll get the argument in position zero. Now we should be able to see what's happening. So if we run the program again and have a look at what the arguments are. The first argument is the path to the binary. This is a normal convention, so we'll just accept it. And when we see two arguments that we're passing, we expect to see three arguments from the point of view of the program. Now we know what to expect, we can start building out our program a bit. So we expect to get three arguments, and we'll make sure we do. And we'll give a message if not. And if we get the wrong number, we'll print out the arc count so the user can see what they did wrong. And we'll exit with an exit code of usage error. Then we can start building out some logic. So we'll create a simple greeter program. So the first argument will be the person we want to greet, or the name of the person we want to greet. And this expect checks for a missing error, and we'll unwrap it and print out a message if this argument is missing. And then we'll expect a language as the second argument. And once again, we'll print out an error if that's missing. Now we can do something with this. So we'll use a match block to check the language. If the language is English, we can print out a simple message. We'll add a print that says, hello, placeholder, person. Otherwise, if the language is German, we'll print out a message that says, hello, and then the name of the person. And then finally, if the language is French, we'll print out a message that prints them in French. And we should make this a little more interesting. There we go. If we don't know what the language is, we still need to do something. So we'll add a placeholder and print out that we don't know what the language is. And just so it's clear, in case the language is an empty string, or anything like that, we'll wrap it in single quotes, and we should be good to go. So let's try out our greeter program to make sure it works. So we'll run it, with the first argument being the person to greet. So we'll just use our name, and language English. Doesn't look so good. So it's saying two arguments required, got three, but we think we fixed that. So what's gone wrong? Looks like we've made a silly mistake here. So we were checking for exactly two arguments so we could print out a message to show what was happening. But we actually want to check if we were missing the right number of arguments. So if the program hasn't got exactly three, we want to stop. So let's try that again. And this time it behaves well. So we'll try German. Hello, Dionysus. Excellent. And French. Bonjour, Dionysus. Great, that's it.
So this code works, but it's not the best. We're still having to know upfront how many arguments we want to accept. And as you can see here, we're only receiving strings. So if we want to get numbers or timestamps or anything like that, we have to do a bit of work to turn these strings into the data types we care about. So is there a better way? Let's try building a simple calculator app. And this time we'll use a library. So we'll start a new project and we'll add clap which is a Rust library for command line application parsing. So this tells us what features we have enabled and what optional features there are for the library. We won't dig into that too much now. Let's just see what we can build with it. Let's add some code to our calculator application that integrates with clap. So I'll add a struct that models the arguments we want our program to take. We'll add an op which will be the operation for the calculator to do, like plus and minus. Then we'll add two inputs, a first floating point input and a second. Then to integrate with clap, we add a derive statement, oops, which grabs the parser, and we need to import that. There we go. And we'll also add some extra information for the help. And then we'll make sure that these are usable. So first thing to do is to turn this into a flag. And we'll see what that looks like in a minute. Short, long and value parser. And then for these ones, we'll just make them value parsers. So these won't be available as flags, they'll just be positional arguments. Then to add the logic for the program, so we'll need to make use of the struct we've built. So we ask clap to parse those arguments. Then we'll need to process them so we can match on the CLI operation. So if we see a plus. Then we'll add up the two numbers. And we'll assign that to our result. And print it out. Let's see how that does. So we'll go for cargo run. And then we don't want to pass our arguments to cargo. We want to pass them to the program that cargo is building. So we'll add a double dash. And then our op flag with a plus and two numbers to operate on. And it looks like we weren't quite ready yet. So we haven't got a default case in our match. Let's go back and add that. So we need to handle the case where we're past an operator we don't recognize. So we'll add a default case and we'll panic. Unrecognized operator. And we'll print out the operator we were past so we can see what happened. Let's see how that does now. That looks better. It's added the two numbers together. So let's go back and add the remaining cases. So to fill in the remaining cases, we'll add a subtract. And we'll add a multiply. Multiply by cmi.second. And we'll add a divide. And then we could also get fancy, and we could allow the string plus, or the string subtract, or the string multiply, or the string divide. And we'll give that a test. So we'll see if our existing case already works, which it does. Let's try multiplying two numbers together. Excellent. And let's try subtracting two numbers. Excellent. It all looks like it's working. This is a fairly simple program, but we're already getting a lot of value out of the clap. There's a lot more we could do if we decided to dig into the clap documentation. 
but even now, if we jump back to the command line and have a look at some of the features it's giving us that we didn't have with the basic version that we built just using the built-in standard library. So let's build the program properly with cargo build, and then we can run it by jumping into the target directory, debug, and calculator.exe, and run it with help and it'll print us out a nice help information which tells us how to use it. Then we can see as we did before that we can add two numbers together. Oops, sorry. There we go. But we can be more flexible with it. So it will quite happily accept two numbers and then an operation to you do on them. Which is something we certainly wouldn't have if we built this ourselves. So hopefully we'll dig into this more in the future. But for now, there's a taster of building command line applications with Rust.